solving systems using augmented matrix. Okay, there are three steps to solving a system with an augmented matrix. The first thing you have to do is to actually write the system as an augmented matrix. So with the coefficient matrix on the left and then a dashed line, and then your solution matrix on the right. The second step is to complete a series of row operations. What this means is you can multiply uh, any row by a scalar and add it to a row and make it the new row. Um, or you can just multiply and then make that the new row. So those are the row operations that we can do. Or we can completely switch rows around. Um, we'll do a couple examples to show you what this is all about. And the last step is to make sure that the identity matrix is on the left of the dashed line and then the solution would be the right side of the line. And that's it. All right, so let's do an example of an augmented matrix. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually write it as an augmented matrix. So that would be 4, 7, 46, and 4, negative 2, 28. And my dashed line in where my equal sign was. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to get a 1 in the upper left-hand corner because that is supposed to be a 1 in my identity matrix. So I need that to be a 1. So how do I get that to be a 1? Well, if I multiply the first row by 1 fourth, 1 fourth times row 1, then what I would get would be 1, 7 over 4, and 46 divided by 4, which is actually going to be 23 over 2, simplified. And I have done nothing to my second row, so my second row is going to remain the same, 4, negative 2, and 28. So now I have a 1 in my upper corner. The next thing I need to do is to get a 0 there. So my first step was to get a 1 where the first four was. And now I want to get a zero where that second four is. So to get a zero there, I need to take a negative four times my first row and add it to my second row. So that would be my first row not changing. And my second row is going to become a negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4, plus 4 is 0. Negative 4 times 7 over 4 is a negative 7. Negative 7 plus a negative 2 is negative 9. And then negative 4 times 23 over 2, and then add that to 28, is going to give me a negative 18. Just type it in the calculator and you'll get that. Okay, so now I have a 1 and a 0. So my next step is going to be to get a 1 right here because that's the next place where I need to get a 1 for my identity matrix. 1 where the negative 9 is. So to do that, similar to the first step that we did, we're going to multiply by a negative 1 over 9 times my row 2. So that's going to give me my first row not changing, 1, 7 fourths, 23 halves, and then 0, because 0 divided by 9 is 0. Negative 9 divided by negative 9 is a 1. And then negative 18 divided by negative 9 is a positive 2. Okay, now I have one more step to do. My final step is going to be to get a zero where the seven fourth is. So to get that zero, that's going to be similar to my second step. I need to do something to the second row and then add it to the first row to get a zero. So 
that would be negative 7 fourths times my row 2 plus my row 1 is going should get me a 0. So my second row won't change because it's already what we want it to be. 0 times negative 7 fourths plus 1 is 1. Negative 7 fourths times 1 is negative 7 fourths plus 7 fourths is 0. Perfect. Uh, negative 7 fourths times 2 plus 23 over 2. If you type that into the calculator, you should get 8. So that means that our final answer is going to be 8, 2. So let's do another example. This one is already written as an augmented matrix. Just remember that the top row is your x and the bottom row is your y. So the first thing I need to do is get a 1 where the 6 is. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to take 1 sixth times row 1. So 1 sixth times 6 is 1. 1 sixth times 3 is 1 half. 1 sixth times negative 24 is a negative four. And then my next row, we didn't do anything to it, so it remains the same. Negative one, nine, twenty-three. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is get a zero where the negative one is. Okay, so to do that, I'm just going to simply add row one plus row 2 because that's going to cancel it out. So my first row isn't going to change. My second row is going to become negative or 1 plus negative 1 which is 0, 1 half plus 9 which is actually going to be 18 halves. And negative 4 plus 23 is going to be a positive 19. Okay, the next thing I need to do is get a 1 the, where the 19 halves is. So how am I going to do that? Well, if I multiply by the opposite fraction, 2 over 19, then I should get that. So that would be my top row not changing, 1, 1 half, negative 4. And then if I multiply by 2 over 19 to the second row, then 2 over 19 times 0 is 0. 2 over 19 times 19 over 2, that's going to cancel things out to 1. And then 2 over 19 times 19 is going to give me 2. The last step that I have to do is to get a zero where the one half is. Okay, so to get a zero there, I'm going to multiply the second row by the opposite, so negative one half times row two, and then add that to my row one. So my row two is not going to change because it's already exactly how we want it. Zero two one and two, and then negative one half times zero is zero plus one is one. Negative one half times one is one half, ne sorry, negative one half plus one half is zero. Negative one half times two is a negative one. Negative one plus negative four is a negative five. So that means that my final answer is right there, which is negative five comma two. And that's how we can solve using an augmented matrix. Those are your notes over solving systems using augmented matrices. Um, make sure you go through some of these practice problems. This is a kind of a tricky concept at the beginning, but once you get it, it's not too bad. And then prepare for your quiz over solving systems using matrices.